doing in Denmark since '74, how he was, how he, he, how he was allowed to come here, and but but that's speculation. But but you can speculate about a lot of things because it was during the Cold War. It appears that Galeno was released because the necessary documents were not presented in time. The authorities have stopped looking for Galeno, even though the case remains unsolved. But Jack is about to find surprising clues to the whereabouts of the prime suspect. After his interrogation in 1993, Francesco Galeno, the prime suspect in the Georgi Markov case, disappeared without trace. The authorities made no further efforts to track him down. But journalist Jack Hamilton has located several people that knew Galeno in Copenhagen. People are not really keen to speak about him at all. I think they're perhaps frightened to, to talk about the, the fact that they knew him and what he was like. I have found one person who has agreed to speak to me about Francesco Galeno, but he's also very frightened and c concerned not to be identified. Jack Source has known Galeno on and off for over 15 years. They first met when Galeno owned a picture framing business. How did you feel when this news came out that Francesco Galeno, who you knew, was said to be connected with Georgi Markov's death? I was shocked. I was shocked. And, and, and What did he say about it? OK, of course, I, I asked him, but he couldn't understand that a secret service would do things like that uh, because he was only a small man, a little man. And we don't spoke more about it. Well, what, what does he do now, this today? But he's, uh, is, is, he, is, he, is he alive? He, he, yes, uh, common friends uh, meet him uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, and he still lives here and, and come and go. And, so uh, and 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 I uh, I don't have uh, I want I don't want uh, to have any trouble. No one is looking for Francesco Galino anymore, but Jack has found sightings of him all over Europe. A wire service reported his arrest on the German border in 2002. The chief suspect in the Umbrella murder seems to be alive and well. I've even spoken to an art dealer who said he saw him here in Copenhagen as recently as two years ago. Um, this is amazing. Uh, it seems that, uh, that, that uh, Gulino is, um, is working and, 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 and traveling th throughout Europe, and the uh, authorities don't appear to be interested in him at all. Francesco Gulino has never commented on the allegations connecting him to the murder of Georgi Markov. Jack tried to approach Galeno through his contacts in Copenhagen, but everyone is too afraid to help. The murder of Georgi Markov is still an open investigation in Britain, and Scotland Yard refuses to comment on the current status of the case. But the Bulgarians did agree to an interview with their police investigator in Sofia. Andrei Svetanov has suspended all work on the Bulgarian investigation, citing lack of evidence. This is the entire Markov case. Eighty percent of the documents point to the account that Markov was killed by a Bulgarian state security agent or someone who worked for them. It's all pointing towards that account. More than eighty percent in that direction. But we need 100%. Under our law, every doubt has to be in the interest of the accused. Proof has to be beyond reasonable doubt. But perhaps there's another reason for the Bulgarians' reluctance to move forward. There is a statute of limitations on the case which runs out in September 2008. After this time, the investigation will be closed forever. Unfortunately, that's how it's decided in our law. In the case of this crime, the statute of limitations is 30 years. 
even if the suspect is found, he can't be prosecuted in our courts if the statute has run out. Today there is no sign that the necessary documents will ever be released in Bulgaria to solve the case. The country is now applying for membership of the European Union, and reopening the Georgi Markov case would be politically embarrassing for them. I think they're just trying to forget their past. Joining the EU hasn't meant in Bulgaria facing up to, to what the communist regime did. They feel that um, looking into these things would, would, would be, would be p painful and, and distracting for them. Uh, and there's no political will to, to do that at all. Even if no individual is ever brought to trial, Vladimir Kostov, the other poison pellet victim, still feels that the Bulgarian government should publicly acknowledge the crimes of the communist era. I don't seek anything. I'm not looking for the person who fired the shot into me or into Markov. Perhaps it's the same person. I'm not looking for the person who ordered it either. I understand very well that it was a political matter. So it should be treated as a political matter. It's not about blaming an individual who simply executed orders and obeyed the laws of a regime. It's about getting rid of this poisoned legacy of the Cold War. Markov's family hoped that one day the Bulgarian government will admit that Georgi Markov was the victim of a political assassination. Yet 30 years on, the authorities remain silent, and the family continues to live with the quiet frustration of an unresolved murder. For Markov's cousin, Lubin, the only solution can come from the Bulgarian state. The names aren't important. The finger that did it isn't important. But the mind that thought it up is. Competition that only one can win. Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Two airline giants.